welcome to Analog Output. And I want to tell you about a problem that I have been having with my synthesizer power supplies. And I discovered in looking into this that there were other people out there with the same problem. It's not an uncommon thing. It took me a while, but I eventually found out what is causing the problem and how to fix it. So if perhaps you're one of these people who's having this kind of problem with your power supply, listen carefully. So what was the problem? Well, were you paying attention? I showed you where I was turning on a switch and three LEDs came on. One LED did not come on. I turned the switch off again. I turned the switch right back on again and all four LEDs came on. So what was going on? Well, in Cosmodrome, I have three linear power supplies, one for the top row, one for the middle row, one for the bottom row. And two of these are supplies based on the music from outer space wall wart supply design and one of them is a frequency central FC power. So these are different designs, but they're not lots different. There's a lot in common between them. They're both supplies that work by taking 12 volts AC from a power adapter, also known as a wall wart. 12 volts AC is rectified to produce plus and minus unregulated voltages around 15, 17 volts, and those unregulated voltages go into a couple of voltage regulator chips, which then produce the regulated 12 volts plus and minus that you need for the synthesizer. The thing that I was observing was that sometimes, and for me it's been roughly a third of the time, maybe up to about a half the time, the positive voltage regulator would fail to start up. So I would get minus 12 volts from the negative regulator, I would get nothing from the positive regulator. And that's what you saw at the beginning where on one of the supplies, both plus and minus 12 came up and they lit up their LEDs. On the top row supply, only the minus 12 volt regulator came up and only one LED lit up. And I found that, as you saw there, if I turned off the switch and turned the switch back on again, then generally speaking, the regulator that had failed to start up before would start up and I would have all of my output voltages. So what's going on here? I was thinking, well, maybe it's too large a load. Maybe I'm demanding too much of the power supply. So that was when I was seeing it with one supply running two rows of the synthesizer, so I built a second power supply and split the two rows between the two power supplies. Same problem continued to occur. Thought it might have something to do with the inrush currents, charging up capacitors, but which capacitors I didn't know and I how to address it I didn't know. Took a while. I posted about it on the LMNC discourse group. Several other people said, oh yeah, I've got the same problem. Haven't figured out what to do about it. But eventually some information came to light and let me tell you what I learned. So I want to show you a bit of a schematic. This is just a portion of the power supply in the area around the positive power supply regulator. You see on the left there's the unregulated voltage coming in on pin 1 of this voltage regulator chip. On pin 3 you have the regulated 12 volt output pin 2 is connected to ground. Over on the right I've shown a resistor which I've labeled load and this just represents the thing that's being powered which in my case is synthesizer modules. There's a couple of 1N4004 rectifier diodes there. These diodes are discussed in a Texas Instruments application note number AN182. I'll put a link to that down in the description if you want to read it. The purpose of these diodes is to protect the voltage regulator 
in certain circumstances from discharges from capacitors. So for instance, if you were to short the input of the voltage regulator, pin 1, and if you had a charge on the capacitor, the capacitor would try, in the absence of these diodes, the capacitor would try to discharge through the voltage regulator. And if there was enough energy stored in the capacitor, it would destroy the voltage regulator. So what you do is you put the diode that you see there from pin 3 to pin 1, and this provides a safe discharge path for the capacitor and protects the voltage regulator. The other diode from pin 3 to pin 2 in that AN182 application note, they show that this is to protect against discharge from a capacitor between pin 2 and ground. And if the output is shorted in the absence of that diode, it would try to discharge through the voltage regulator with the diode in place, it can discharge through the diode and protect the voltage regulator. But there is no such capacitor in either of these power supplies. Okay, granted, there's always some parasitic capacitance, but it's pretty small. I don't think it can cause this kind of trouble. I do know that they talk about the other diode from pin 3 to pin 1 being not needed if the capacitor is less than about 10 microfarads and the parasitic capacitance is going to be way, way less than that. So my feeling is that that diode from pin 3 to pin 2 really is superfluous. It's not doing anything useful as far as protecting the voltage regulator. On the other hand, I am not an authority on this kind of thing. I could well be wrong about how I'm thinking about this, and I'm pretty sure that diode's not causing any harm, so sure, let's leave it in there. Anyway, that's what's going on around the positive regulator. Now there's also the negative regulator, so here we're seeing how the negative regulator is hooked up in a similar fashion to the positive regulator. And now let's think about what happens if the negative regulator starts up faster than the positive regulator. Well, in that case, you're going to have minus 12 volts on pin 3 of the negative regulator. On pin 3 of the positive regulator, in the absence of a load, it would just be floating, but with the load connecting the plus and minus 12 volt rails, you're going to have pin 3 on the positive regulator pulled down to some negative voltage. And according to AN182, if the positive regulator's output pin is pulled to a sufficiently low voltage, that regulator will not start up. And vice versa, right? Well, no. The application note goes on to say that due to differences in the internal circuitry, the negative voltage regulator doesn't have the same problem. The output pin on the negative voltage regulator can be pulled positive, and it doesn't care. It'll go ahead and start up anyway. So we have a mechanism here by which sometimes the positive voltage regulator will fail to start up, while the negative voltage regulator always does, which is exactly the kind of thing that I was seeing. OK, so what do you do about this? Well, AN182 goes on to say that clamping the output to ground with a germanium or Schottky diode usually solves this problem. Okay, the point is we've got a diode there in this design from pin 3 to ground. Whether it's really needed to protect the voltage regulator or not, who knows, but it has another effect, which is that because the forward voltage of this diode is about 700 millivolts, it will prevent the output pin from being pulled down below about minus 700 millivolts, which is good, right? But it's not good enough. If the output is pulled down to minus 700 millivolts, the 
regulator will not start up. But with a Schottky diode, the forward voltage is typically somewhere around 200 to 300 millivolts. So a Schottky diode in that place will prevent the output pin from being pulled down lower than about 200 or 300 millivolts negative. And that usually apparently is good enough, or at least so says Texas Instruments. So when I installed the third row in Cosmodrome and installed the third power supply for Cosmodrome, first of all, I removed the 1N4004 rectifier diode from the positive output, and I replaced it with a Schottky diode. I used a 1N5817. And because, according to Texas Instruments, this problem doesn't exist with the negative voltage regulators, I just left that 1N4004 in place on the negative regulator side. So I only replaced the one on the positive side. Here's a picture of the Frequency Central FC power board. There's an arrow there pointing to the relevant diode, the one that connects the positive regulator pin 3 to pin 2. That's the one I replaced. And then I installed that, and I've turned on the synthesizer a number of times since then. And what I see is that on the first two rows, where we have the unmodified power supplies, there continues to be a problem roughly a third to a half the time. But on the bottom row, both plus and minus 12 volts do turn on every time. So I think we've identified the problem, and I think we have a solution. And if you're seeing a similar problem with your linear power supply, I suggest going ahead and making that change. You can probably use just about any general purpose Schottky diode. I used a 1N5817. If you're concerned about replacing a rectifier diode with a Schottky diode, is that still going to work? Well, as I said before, I don't think that diode was really serving any useful purpose so I don't think it matters whether that diode is there at all as far as protection for the voltage regulator is concerned. So yeah, I think it's perfectly safe to replace that with the Schottky diode. Texas Instruments recommends putting a Schottky diode there. It hasn't caused any problems that I've been aware of. I think it's fine. So give it a try. Hope you found this informative, or at least interesting. Next video, we're going to be looking at one of the more recent modules that I've built for Cosmodrome. I think you're going to be interested in that. So stay tuned. Keep an eye out for it. And I will see you next time on Analog Output.